I think it's safe to say that I'm a big fan of The Simpsons. I've talked about it a lot here on this channel as well as on the website. It's a show that I've grown up with since I was born to the point where it's been basically a part of my life since the very beginning. The Simpsons show came out in 1989. I was born in 1989. We share kind of this common bond that's kind of hard to break for a show like that. But, you know, I'm not going to lie. I kind of agree with most of the best seasons of The Simpsons are definitely in the early years. The first 10 years, I think, are the best of the best. Season 11 through 14 is where kind of the drop-off in quality begins. 15 to 19 is more misses than hits. 20 to 25 brings it back up a little bit. And then season 26 and 29 are kind of back to where 15 to 19 are. It's definitely been a roller coaster ride for The Simpsons that it's been on for a while. And most recently, starting in season 30, the show has really begun to pick up again. And in the last couple seasons, the series has not only been returning to form, but they've really been pointing out some of their best stuff in over 20 years. And that's saying a lot. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Once Disney came into the picture and acquired Fox, it's like The Simpsons have somehow found new life that hasn't been there in a long, long time. And this past week, there's the past couple months, actually, there has been a lot of criticisms from people who really don't give the show much of an opportunity anymore, despite the fact that they really are missing out on a show that has continued to get better and better get better and get back to basics of what made it so special in the last couple of seasons and you still have these people who always criticize little things like well Marge shouldn't be voiced be vo voiced by Julie Kavner anymore her voice is straining like she it feels like she's being forced to do it you know like uh there's been a lot of things about whenever a show does but whenever they do a bad episode you hear the things like well so this is back to being bad again let's make a new story about the fact that Homer doesn't strangle his son anymore even though that was just a one note jo or one joke from one episode that people didn't realize came from a recent episode of, from three weeks ago, and they think it just happened the last week. Like, little things like that have made me kind of want to use this episode in particular to talk about the most recent one of The Simpsons, and more importantly, defending the show as it is right now. But because the show has found new life to it, it hasn't been there in a long time. And even though this last season was probably not their best overall, of the last couple seasons, still better than some of the Dark Age seasons, that's that's for damn sure. So you gotta wonder to yourself, how have they done it? And I think I figured out five different reasons why they're capturing this second, this kind of new renaissance of the show again. And it kind of starts off with number one, a new writing, strap, writing staff bringing in new life to the series. You know, while many of the veteran Simpson writers and animators are still with the show, there is this new, younger generation coming in to continue to bring in new stories that can be told with these characters. They've added names like Megan Imran, Ryan Coe, Dan Weber, Elizabeth Kiernan Av Averick, Christine, Nag Christine Nagel, Jessica Conrad joining in with the season vets like Carolina Miney, Tom Gamble, Max Pross, Jeff Westbrook, Brian Kelly, Michael Price, Tim Long, just to name a few. And the meshing of both an older generation of Simpsons writers along with a newer generation of Simpsons writers have led to some creative and well-made episodes and ones that could be put up for some really good laugh-out-loud moments in there. It's kind of like when Disney in the 70s and 80s were doing those two, were having those two different generations where you have the new crop, you have the old, the old guard of Disney, the, the nine old men still there, and you have this new crop of animation legends like John Lasseter and Tim Burton, these young guys, Brad Bird, all these different people coming in there and essentially coming together to bring a new generation together of of great of great talent over there at Disney and it's kind of the same thing that's going on with the Simpsons right now uh, number two focusing more on not just the Simpsons family but other characters as well I mean some of the best episodes from the most recent seasons have focused away from the family themselves you got episodes where you know Skinner and Chalmers go on a road trip a la planes trains and automobiles there's a great episode from a couple years ago where Mrs. Krabappel gets closure at several years after Marsha Wallace's death. There's even an episode where Chief Wiggum's wife gets a story dedicated to herself. It's a new, a whole new personality when you throw in Megan Mullally as the voice. And all those were just from one season alone. Like, this past couple of years, there's been great episodes where Santa's Little Helper has probably the best episode they've ever done with him, even with uh, The Way of the Dog, which... Like I've said before, usually these episodes with Santa's Little Helper are not that great, but that was quite possibly the best episode they've ever done with him most recently. 
this past year, we've had an episode where groundskeeper Willie gets married, and they d dedicate an entire episode to him, which I thought was pretty intriguing. Um, Larry the Barfly just had an episode as of late that a lot of people have been talking about where he dies. You know, this is a character that's been with the show since the very beginning. He hasn't really said anything, but they do a full episode around him, and it's just like, like this is incredible that they take this lone character who hasn't really done a whole lot in terms of like speaking and all that but he's been such a part of the legacy of that show that to do an episode around him and to have it work as well as it does is incredible to think about the episode was cremains of the day by the way which i do recommend checking out i mean it's just something that is very interesting to see them do with all the different simpsons characters number three you have all these different fantastic animation upgrades they add into here like the animation is still one of the stronger aspects of the show because not only has the animation improved dramatically, but it has looked more fluid than it's ever been. The best example was in the Road to Cincinnati episode, where, you know, the whole storyline of the episode is that Chalmers and Skinners have to go to Cincinnati to for Chalmers to give the speech, and he's been hiding the secret that he's going to fire Skinner, and Skinner finds out about it, and he just go he just goes to him and goes, fire me, you bald-pated son of a bitch, and I just love the way the camera angle moves the sounds as Skinner is pushing his hands on Chalmers, and fluid animation like that hasn't been there in a long, long time, and there's another example from that season where uh, there's an episode called Diary Queen, which is the one about Mrs. Kravapo, and the opening is like a La La Land-style musical number, just it, the way the animation moves on that is top-notch, I mean, a lot of episodes as of late have done that. We just had one this year again with Cl with uh, Clan of the K Mob, which is a par which is essentially a parody and homage to Primal at times. Like it's amazing how they capture the style of Primal and do make it their own in this episode. It's just incredible to look at, and I think it's because the animation is now done in house at Fox Animation. But whatever they're, I don't know if it's just that, but whatever they're doing, it's working, and the animation has never looked better in a long, long time for the show. And for the fun factor is just as strong as ever, especially in the last few seasons. This crew is clearly having a lot of fun taking on different concepts and ideas and just going along with it. They did an episode lampooning the Marvel Cinematic Universe with some of the veterans of the universe there, including Marvel's own chairman, Kevin Feige, and the Russo brothers and Kobe Smulders among the guest stars. And it's a very funny, well-made satire. There's a great episode where Homer and Lisa become inspired by watching To Kill a Mockingbird, and the episode includes many of bits of the movie To Kill a Mockingbird, and it's just very well made. It's an episode that at first I wasn't too much of a fan of, but it has definitely grown with me over time. And of course, you got stuff like the, the Thanksgiving themed Treehouse of Horror style episodes, the episodes satirizing Hallmark Christmas movies, among examples. Um, the aforementioned pr Primal cro crossover they did. There's an episode they did this season that was very reminiscent of The Bear. I mean, there's a lot of creativity coming in these new episodes, and you can just tell the fun factor is still here and better than ever. You can tell that these people working on the show are just having a great time making these episodes. And number five, simplicity. You know, just keeping it simple. The show's been able to keep it simple and effective, mixing in with the creative episodes. Sometimes it can be as simple as... Again, the, tra the plane strange and automobile style adventure with Skinner and Chalmers, or Bart becoming a suck-up as a caddy to make money, among other things. Even something like the Maggie Simpson shorts that have been on Disney+, Plus, you know, The Longest Daycare, Play Date with Destiny, a lot of the Disney Plus ones, they all have a very simplistic premise because of how well, but because, but work because of how well the writers can do so much without having too much dialogue involved. And there's so much you can do with Maggie with those shorts that definitely have shown and only... One can only hope that Disney's going to keep putting these out, but as you've seen, we've gotten some of them over the last couple of weeks and months and years, actually. But, yeah, they they have been very well. I like that they are set up in their own different universe where it's just basically a place where the Simpsons can make as many Disney jokes as they want to and they don't have to worry about getting in trouble with them because they're now owned by the company. And, you know, for the most part, the Simpsons has been really pulling through. We're really in a good time with the Simpsons right now. Where, while we're not getting top-tier seasons 1 through 10 Simpsons, we're certainly getting a lot stronger stuff than much more entertaining stuff than the weaker seasons. It's like, despite Disney following Fox, The Simpsons has not had to deal with all these consistent changes from Studio Brass. They've been able to hold their own and could potentially be setting itself up for creating somewhat of another renaissance for the show. Um, and it's like Disney has said, you know, you guys make, the, you guys make a ton of money. We're not going to get in the way of your work. Keep doing what you're doing. And, uh... Keep, just keep doing what you're doing. I think that's what they're doing here. They're just letting them do what they do best and just look, going with the flow. 
I mean, one thing's for sure, now is definitely a good time to get back to watching The Simpsons again. If you've been away from the series for a while, the series is definitely picking up the pace. And even though the last season in general has not been the strongest, it's definitely developing some of the best seasons they've done in a long, long time. I mean, it may be just about time to head back to Springfield, whatever state it's in, if you, re if you really, really think you need to get back. really should, If you really are willing to take the chance, you should definitely get back into watching The Simpsons again. That's for damn sure. But as fun as it is to look at the, f the current state of The Simpsons, it's also fun to go back and look at the beginnings of the show, which... Which brings me to the special announcement that I said I was going to have for this. And um, here it is. This September, we are going to do September, which is a, a month of Simpsons episodic reviews. Very similar to what I had done recently with the critic reviews uh, for the 30th anniversary of that. Simpsons is celebrating its 35th anniversary this year. So I figure, what the hell, I'll do, one, I'll do it one for the Simpsons in j overall. I'll do every episode... Uh, the first 31 ep the first 30 episodes for all throughout the month of September a new review every month every day I should say in the month of September and um, and uh, consider this the first of the many announcements to come on state of the reviewing network which will be coming up at the in the on uh, July around July 1st because July 1st of course is when this whole thing got started but September will be the first major announcement which I'm making right now so September 1st through the 30th, don't miss out on September, which will be episodic reviews of the Simpsons coming out every day in the month of September. And we'll make it a trend. We'll make it our Disney December, our Monster Madness, if you will. So be on the lookout for that. That's going to start on on uh, September 1st, going all the way to September 30th. And um, I hope you guys will be there for that. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you want to see some more discussions I had, I did one last week talking about Young Sheldon. You can go ahead and click the link to that. Check out the playlist, see some of the other episodes we've done. And uh, I will see you guys next time. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.